Let me introduce you to big data. In this presentation, I am going to talk about what defines big data, what are the four views of big data, what are the sources of big data, why it is getting generated, what are the challenges of handling it, what is MapReduce, how does it help, and we will take a look at side by side Hadoop versus traditional systems. And then we are going to take a look at the Hadoop ecosystems, some of the tools like Pig, Hive, R Hadoop, etc. So first thing first, what is what defines big data? The big data gets defined by volume, velocity, variety and veracity. Let's understand these terms. When people talk of big data, the first thing that they talk is volume. They refer it by amount of data, how many GVs, how many petabytes. Typically, this is the most common example of big data when they are referring and it's a relative term. What you need to understand, if your computer can't even open 100 MB Excel file, then 100 MB itself is a big data for you. It's a relative term which refers to the difficulty in storing and processing the data. There are other reasons for big data. For example, velocity with what speed data is getting produced and how agile you need to be to analyze this. Let me give you an example. Let's say tsunami alert or aeroplane landing. You know, you have a lot of information that is coming and you need to process it very fast because that will affect how the aeroplane will land. So a lot of data is getting produced and you need to consume that data and analyze that very fast. So that's a scenario that again leads to big data. I mean, think of if there are many aeroplanes, all of them are leading to a lot of data and that too coming with a lot of velocity. Then comes variety. You can have data coming from CSV files, from SAS file, from RDBMS file. And in RDBMS, you can have many variants. You can have Oracle, you can have some other variants. That's the variety part of the big data. And the final V is the veracity. It's all about uncertainty of the data. How accurate this data is, how relevant this data is. These are the four dimensions, the four complexities that defines the big data. Now let's understand why it is coming. You all would have term, heard terms like in last two years, we have generated more data than we had in history. Why it is happening? If you think of what will you realize that earlier people were reading the documents and trying to feed the data in computer systems. So data was getting captured through data entry by data entry operators. Later, as you are operating through social media like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, these data started getting captured and these data are like getting captured through user interaction user are interacting with each other and the data is getting generated. That's the another piece. And this piece led to a huge jump in the data that what was coming out here. It was a job. This became a part of the life. But in reality, the more data is coming from the third stage where actually like machines are capturing data on their own. Like you, you can find these sensors taking pictures of Earth every minute. There are several sensors in the car which is sending information to a centralized computer and which is do doing the vibration analysis to find each component of the car is doing fine or not. Even if you think of like when you swipe a credit card or you call someone or you browse something on the internet, all these things are getting captured and these are not re really the text that you are entering. These are machines are themselves capturing what are you doing. This has led to huge jump in the data, in the volume of data and the velocity of the data. And this has led to the many challenges. Let me talk about one of the challenge of handling such big data. So let's say earlier we used to have structured data. Structured data means what? 
you have clearly defined tables and in the tables you have clearly defined fields and the linkage of the fields are clearly established. So if you think of first you are defining the database and then you are bringing data to this place. But what happens now? The structure of the data keeps changing. There are a lot many people who are interacting with each other and that's why structure of data keeps changing. Also, as the data is so huge, so humongous, you can't store in one place. So what is the way out? How you can solve it? Let me talk about MapReduce, which is an important concept and that makes it possible that how you can have distributed storage and processing. Essentially, the concept is that you can't probably deal with 100 GB of data, a simple computer, but it can deal with probably 1 GB of data. Why not use 100 of computers parallelly and get this? Let me show you, explain you MapReduce that will explain you how it works and how does it help. So let me explain you MapReduce through an example. So let's say that, you know, if your computer can handle say 750 MB of data and you have got 50 GB of data which you need to analyze, your task is to find biggest five values. Your any single computer can't handle it. But you have 250 such computers lying in the office. Can you use it? So le now let's think of this way that you create 0.5 GB that is 500 MB proportion of data and send it to 100 of computers. You have 250 computers lying, send it to hundreds of computer. Now if you think of all the computers can handle it because they can handle up to 750. So 500 MB they will be able to handle very easily. So what is the benefit? You are not able to handle this data, but now you can process this data. Now what will you ask from each of the computer? You will ask from each of the computer that give me your biggest five values. Why? Because if you think of what you have done, you had 50 GB of data, you created 100 partitions and from each one you are taking the top five values. Now the biggest five values in the five 50 GB of data has to be among these 50, these five values into 100 that you are getting from each partition. Every computer is sending you five value and you have 100 such computer which is getting utilized for this task. So you have 500 values and the top five value, the biggest five value of this 50 GB has to come from this 500 values. Because you have taken top five from all of them and now you compare, sort them, you can definitely get which is the top five values. So what you have done, just take a look. What you did, you had 50 GB of data, you distributed, you made it 0.5 GB, 500 MB and send it to hundreds of file. So what you did, you mapped this data to multiple PCs, you collected five top five values, because there are hundreds of computer, you got total five from each of them, so you got 500 values. Now these 500 values can be easily sorted and you can produce the result. So what you did, you mapped this 50 GB data to multiple computers and then you took the summary and you reduce it to the final top five values. So here you mapped it and when you took result from all of them, you reduced it. That's what is the concept of map and reduce. Map is all about performing filtering, sorting, etc. And reduce method is all about summarization of the result from the parallel processing. Now, you might wonder that what advantage did we get? One thing I can say that you didn't have the capacity to handle this 50 GB of data. And because of this parallel processing, you are able to handle it. This itself is a big gain. But there is one more gain. It provides tremendous jump in the processing speed. Let me show you how. You know, even if you had a computer which was probably 100 times powerful than each of the computer, do you think this could have done better job than this 100 computer? Actually not. If you think of, if each sorted algorithm, let's say if the complexity is n log n 
and for 500 MB you can simply put 500 into ln well and means log base e 500 you'll 53107 units in time now each of them are doing taking that time so each the whole process is taking 3107 unit this unit might be in second or millisecond or nanosecond depending on the processing speed now if you have a 500 times powerful machine you know and you if you put 50000 and ln 50,000 divide by 100 because it's the processing capacity is much more than this kind of computer it will still take 5409 units you can simply calculate in Excel and you can check it I have done in Excel and I have realized that that's how it goes let me show it to you by the time it comes I mean I'll keep proceeding so the point that I'm trying to say the parallel processing makes it much faster and makes it possible which is otherwise you are not able to do you can see this calculation you know if you are putting 500 and this is how i have used the formula it is going to and if it, if it is 100 times powerful it is going to take 5409 units which is definitely more than this so what benefit you have got first of all you are able to process it and second you are able to process it much faster what is Hadoop? Hadoop actually is not a single thing Hadoop is an ecosystem and Hadoop implements MapReduce let me show you the components of Hadoop Hadoop you know is an ecosystem for storage retrieval and analysis of data it uses the concept of MapReduce and let me show you Hadoop versus traditional system side by side in traditional system your storage is centralized in Hadoop it is distributed in traditional system your processing is centralized here processing is distributed each of the hundred computer were doing the processing whereas in traditional system you bring all the data to computer and there it have the processing happens also traditional systems requires a specialized machine whereas if you think of you are very much using the commodity hardware the machine that were lying in the office in the example that I talked also just because of this reason you are using commodity hardware these traditional systems each com the supercomputer that computer which has 100 times power are provided in a high availability mode whereas each individual hardware you know cannot be so much available all the time these are commodity hardware these are general usage hardware so Hadoop has to provide high availability through redundancy so what it does whatever is the data at one place it replicates into another PC as well and in actually for each data it makes two copies and you know why it does so that if at all one computer out of hundred fails it does not become a victim of its processing it has that data in some other computer so that it can process and provide the result traditional systems are very well suited for environment which requires multiple write whereas Hadoop is more suited for in an environment where you write once and after that read many times I mean think of whatever information a satellite is collecting that you need to write and after that you don't need to modify it ever in that circumstances Hadoop will be much better because you have you are writing it once and reading multiple times where it is supposed to give a processing speed traditional systems requires SQL whereas Hadoop you have no SQL because no SQL su supports non-structured not so structured data or unstructured data where SQL is supposed to work on structured data let's take a look at Hadoop ecosystem graphically at the end of the day it's like it works on the commodity hardware general usage hardware and Hadoop layer actually consists of a name node name node is like a table of contents it knows where the data information resides you can think of like you know if at all you are talking of a storage of like movies it knows you know which particular movie resides in and let's say you make year wise 
separation. So 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. So it knows this particular movie was generated in 2003. So it essentially if you are looking for that information, it has to go and search in 2003. If there is a particular movie, there has been five replication and that has happened in 1997, 2004, 2006. It will, it knows, name, name note contains those information and it will only send to those PCs, those hardwares. And Hadoop player in, works on the basis of concept of map reduce. So when it is sending, it is taking the help of map reduce which knows that ultimately when I'll get the result from all these five, I, this is how I'll summarize. So this is how it is mapping and this is how it is summarizing. Also, if you think of Hadoop also provides a set of lot of tools. For example, it provides a scoop or flume, which is used for data in and out in the Hadoop system. It provides big Hive, NoSQL, which are primarily for information retrieval from the Hadoop system. It provides R Hadoop, which is more for a statistical procedure like uh, regression, correlation analysis, logistic regression, all those things. And it also provides, provides mode, which is for machine learning.